Hi and welcome to another edition of Cadence Fishing TV. Today I'm on the River Ribble at Walton Liddale in Preston. And as you can see we're catching some bonny roach. Today we're fishing with liquidised bread and bread punch on the hook, fishing the bolo at long range. It's a cracking method on this river, especially when you start getting to the autumn and winter months. I'm aiming to catch a decent bag of roach today on the float. There's no better method really, is there? But the real aim on a peg like this is hopefully to catch a crumper or two. And what I mean by that when I say crumper is a roach well above a pound. And if the angling gods are smiling on us, you never know, we might even get one of two pounds plus because they're definitely here in the ribble. I'm fishing today on a length known as Church Deeps. If you can see the far bank, you can see how steep that wood comes down to the river. And the river follows that contour, so the far bank's very deep. It's probably 10 feet deep over there. Uh, where I'm standing, of course, you can see it's about two and a half to three feet deep. And it's a gradual slope out until it suddenly drops into that deeper water at mid-river and it maintains that depth across to the far bank. Now the reason we're fishing this side is because the sun always comes over the wooded bank and on a day like this when the river's clear, there's no colour in the water, the fish naturally head for the far bank where they've got cover and shade and they feel safer. And what we're trying to achieve really by fishing a bolo is casting to where they're sitting and also trying to encourage them to feed. And we're just starting to get more bites now as the day wears on, and I'm hoping to put a few fish together. And what we're fishing for, as I said, a quality roach, and we're fishing with double eight mil punch on the hook. We're not messing about. There's millions and millions of small fish in the ribble. We're trying to avoid those, so we're not fishing with maggots. We're fishing with a big bait, a big visible bait, and roach like nothing better than a nice piece of punch bread as we know. So that's the thinking behind today's strategy. I'm sure many of uh, the Cadence video YouTube viewers will know that we've made videos on here in the past, James and I, where we fish with castor for roach. And you know, we all know that castor is a fantastic bait for sorting out quality roach. But bread equally is just as effective and at this time of year, it's one of my favourite approaches to this river. Roach on the ribble seem to absolutely adore bread. So we're going to go through the motions of how I fish it. It's a deadly bait, it's a cheap bait, and one that everybody can utilise. The thing about bread is how cheap it is, and yet it's so effective. So if you take four pints of casters, for example, you're talking 12 quid plus there, aren't you, in a tackle shop? Well, four pints of bread, it's effectively two loaves liquidised, and you can buy them from, for as little as 30 pence in some supermarkets. So, you know, what's not to like about a bait that's fantastically effective, easy to use, easy to prepare, and produces fish like this? Another lovely ribble roach.
So let's just talk for a minute or two about quantities of bait required for a day's fishing and how we go about feeding the peg and the frequency with which we feed on a river. And basically, because bread's so inexpensive, I think nothing of bringing five or six loaves liquidised with me for a day's fishing on the river. That's still less than £1.50. And as long as you just have a few slices of toasty loaf as well to punch your hook baits from, you're laughing. The way I do it is I mix a blend in my bowl of liquidised bread and punch crumb. That can be standard white bread crumbs that you can buy in a tackle shop. And basically we use the white bread crumb from the tackle shop to bind the liquidised bread to make it firmer, stiffer, to make it sink down through the water a little bit. But another thing that I add always is a lot of cooked hemp, well cooked hemp, because it's dense and it's heavy. And when that gets mixed in with the bread, it enables you to get the bread to drop through the water nicely, creating a lovely cloud as it drops through, bits of particles falling off, the hemp falling to the bottom, creating a lovely carpet on the bottom of the river for the roach to come onto and sit over. In terms of how much I feed, um, because I'm on the Ribble and it's a river that's full of big fish, whether the dace, chub, roach, you shouldn't be shy, you shouldn't be too uh, selfish about feeding a little bit. Be generous, give them a lot. And basically I try and feed a, an egg-sized ball of bread every other cast at least, because you know it's a flowing river, it's deep water, the bread isn't actually going to form solid balls on the bottom, it's breaking up as it drops through the water. It's just an attractant really, but it's an attractant that roach can't resist. I use a, a Drennan catapult with a special ground bait pouch, you can see it here. And I just basically aim at the float and um, just keep something going in through the peg. It, uh, it does attract roach and uh, when they turn up properly, you don't half know about it. I've had some cracking weights on here, in, especially in the winter months catching between 25 and 50 pound of fish. I'm a big fan of the Drennan brass headed punches and uh, because the fish have been finicky today and the water's clear I've scaled down from the opening 9mm punch to a 7.5mm. I'm still fishing with a 16 hook, it's fine, it's a good size for it. Uh, the punch bread is Warburton's toasty and I just simply uh, flatten it with a rolling pin and then I cling film the individual pieces you can see here. And, and this is an idea which enables you, when you go home at the end of a fishing session, if you haven't used any, you can just throw them in the freezer. They retain the moisture, but they don't dry out because they're cling filmed. And they're good to go next time you want to go fishing. So, you know, why throw it away if you can use it? And then basically, I'm giving them two punches at a time today because I want the bait to stand out and because I'm casting a long way, I want to make sure at least one disc stays on the hook. So there's two punch together there. Simply a case of taking the hook point down into the slot on the side of the punch, pulling it through. And if you can see now, I'm just going to gently, carefully rotate that pellet through. And there you can see the point and the barb and the back of the hook going through the, the, the back edge of the pellet of bread. The Ribble at Waltonley Dale is tidal and I'm just noticing uh, the level coming up a few inches 
Uh, it always pays to check your tide tables or to even purchase a tide table book from a tackle shop. You can also find all the information relevant to the area you live in online. But uh, just be careful with tides, you know, you've got to keep an eye on the levels. It may well be that I have to bail out for 20 minutes or so. We'll just keep a, a very careful eye on what it does in the next 10 minutes. If I have to come out for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it doesn't matter. Um, often you catch very well on the back of the tide as it, as it goes back out to sea. It can really be a great trigger to get fish to feed properly. So there we go, just remember tides, you've got to treat them with a bit of respect. If you're on a tidal river, take care, pay attention to your tide tables and uh, stay safe. You know, there's a lot of pegs on, on the ribble around the Preston area that will produce to bread uh, once the weather starts to cool down a little and, you know, the river's running clear and the water's going colder. When we got here this morning, it was flat calm. There was no wind. If there was any wind at all, it was a hint of a downstream wind. I started on a three gram bollow float and that was enough to cast the distance required across the river. As the day wore on, the wind actually swung round to a very gentle upstream breeze initially. And then, because we're on a tidal stretch of the river and a tide was coming in at about quarter past to half past one, that always brings a weather situation with it, a mini front, if you will. And the wind got up and it stayed up. And obviously using a long rod, like a 16 foot rod, which I'm using today, that helps you massively with line control, line pickup at distance when you're striking. The long rod also enables you to fish in deep water comfortably on a fixed top and bottom rig like this, like a bollow. As I said, because the wind has increased in strength, I've had to keep increasing the size of float to the point where I'm now fishing a five gram bollow because I need that to combat the strength of the wind when I'm casting to the area where I want to catch fish. But by using an olivette and a nice gentle punch like that, the weight of the olivette takes a float and the hook bait out to where you want to be. And with a long rod and a nice floating line like this on the reel, you've got good control. And as you know, good control is everything for any sort of fishing, whether you're fishing a canal, a river, Whatever you're doing, you need good presentation, good control. The rod I'm using today is the Cadence CR10 16 foot number one float rod. I've actually got two of these and uh, I've got two set up today, one with a bollow, one with a big haven on it. I've used this rod now for two years since it first came out. As you all probably know, it was designed by James Robbins. And I've got to say, it's a fantastic rod. You seldom bump fish on it. I've had roach up to around two pounds on this particular blank. Just handles them so well and it'll handle chub to four pound. It's just a great weapon to have in your rod bag if you're a river angler. I've matched the rod up with a Cadence um, CS 10 4000 it's got a 6 to 2 retrieve ratio which is dead right I think for float fishing and the real line I've actually changed the spool I started off on two and a half pound line but I found because of the wind the wind was hampering casting and I was getting odd tangles where the olivette was wrapping around on itself and I think it was the imbalance between the thickness of the real line and the finer diameter of the hook length which was causing this with the wind so I've, I've actually got out and changed the spool over and I've now got some uh, two pound bayer, uh, which is a finer diameter. It, it probably mics up around 013 two pound bayer. 
which is more in keeping with the, the hook length diameter and I'm not getting tangles anymore and I've started to actually catch more fish because it has helped my presentation. Talking about presentation and with bread, you know, it's very important to get the bait down because it is a fairly buoyant bait. So as I said, I'm using a five gram olivette uh, on this particular bollow. There's a couple of tuning shot there to lock it in place. And then I've got four number eights strung out equidistant, leaving about 15, 16 inches from the last number eight to the hook. There's your hook again. Can you see that? That's the, um, the Drennan uh, carbon match. So basically, that's the arrangement. There's probably getting on for three and a half foot between the olivet and the hook. So I've got four droppers for a nice slow fall for the last three feet, because roach do watch everything as it drops through the water. And it is about achieving good presentation. <laughs> The hook length I'm using today is some 0.12 Omni, which has a breaking strain of two pounds. It's mega strong line for its diameter. A friend of mine's had Bible to 10 pound on it. And um, it really is super strong, but a nice true diameter too. I'm just gonna put a new hook length on now, actually. You can see it there, loop to loop and um, yeah, it's, it's bomb proof really, Omni, and it's nice and supple. It's a nice colour too, difficult for the fish to see it, but very strong for its diameter, excellent line. The hook, um, there, are two, there are two patterns that I tend to use for bread fishing, either the Camasan B560 or the Drennan uh, Carbon Match. They're both um, medium wire, and um, as you can see, there's one in the hook tie here. The medium wire, nice, decent size spade. Uh, in the case of the carbon match, it's a crystal bend. In the case of the 5.6, it's more of a round bend. But they're both very good for punch, for big punch fishing on a river. Uh, and they're strong enough to handle chub. And they're certainly strong enough for roach without being too thick in the wire and also not too thin in the wire where you start bending hooks out of shape when you're bagging up. You don't have to slavishly stick to fishing with bread punch on the hook. There are alternatives which can bring you extra bites and extra bonus fish. The first one is obviously bread flake. And another good one at this time of year, September, is sweet corn. 
And we found on the Ribble particularly that uh, sweet corn can help you on a day when you've been absolutely plagued by small day. So worth carrying some with you. And uh, just to be environmentally friendly, open your corn at home and get rid of the tin there. Don't, don't be one of these people who leave the rubbish on the bank. Here's a little something that might help you to pep up your swim and get a few more bites. This is liquidised hemp. It's hemp that's been well cooked, overcooked, so that all the shells are splitting and you can see the kernel. And then it's allowed to uh, cool after draining off. And then I put it through a blender. And you can see the consistency. It's very, very soft and sticky. You're probably wondering how I feed it. So I'm going to show you. You basically roll a bowl of it in the breadcrumbs and almost make a Ferrero Rocher of bread and hemp. I'll show you there. We'll pop it in, put some bread over it like that. Just roll it around in the bread, if you can see. There it is. And that is a morsel of food that no self-respecting roach could ever possibly refuse. It's now just coated enough and firm enough for me to cat catapult out into the peg. So we'll give it a, a quick flick in and then we'll have another cast and see if we can catch another roach. So just nice and easy. This is why you need this molded pouch for stuff like this, because it's soft. You try to fire that out in a pouch where it's tighter and the sides are gripping it and you've absolutely no chance. Let Mr Duck get out of the way. Go on Mr Duck. Okay. And there it goes. And if you watch on the surface, you can see the milky cloud that it gives off. And that really helps to draw roach into the peg. What a stunning roach, caught on the bread punch. What a fantastic way to end a session. Well, there we are, 50 splendid roach from the River Ribble, all caught on bread punch. It's a cracking method, well worth you considering using in the coming months as it goes cooler. Thanks for watching.